Hey guys, what's up? So, if you watched my previous video, I mentioned this boy dog thing I got on eBay. So I picked this up on eBay, 300 bucks, and it actually looked like it was almost brand new. And it was actually an incredible deal, because to buy all this stuff would have been like 700 bucks. But, uh, it's just the boxes, but... So it's a complete unit. Shit, that was thrown in there. Had this for a couple, about a week or so. Um, yeah, it came with the all the stuff. It came with the actual the pyrometer kit. So that's actually that's the reason why I got it. It's because to buy these things brand new was, you know, just the gauge itself was like four forty nine, and then uh, to get the pyrometer kit, the secondary kit is like an extra two hundred bucks. So yeah, it came with my mounting, but here's the device. I've actually already updated the software on the device, so it's actually a lot smaller than I thought it would be. You know, originally it's this thing is actually tiny. So, let me show you some of the other stuff I got too to, to work on it. But uh, yeah, this is the pyrometer kit. The cool thing about this pyrometer kit is it can also do analog inputs. And that's how I got some analog inputs for it. So, I mean, it looks like this thing was never even installed. I, I don't know, you know? Like I said, look at the wires. You know? Like they never even actually uncut or anything, you know? So, I'm thinking this is, like I said, it never been installed. So, well, this looks like it's. I can't tell. Okay, let me grab the uh, other stuff that I got too. And I'll show you where I put this thing. Alright, so some of the other stuff I got is I got some pressure sensors too. Because actually, I want to hook up my, uh, my coolant uh, pressure gauge. So instead of having a manual gauge like I have in the cab right now, I wanted to actually connect it to the analog input. On the on the computer or on the uh, bully dog thing, but I also bought this. This is from Glow Shift, but it's gonna allow me to tap into my coolant line and hook up a sensor to it. I, I got a 30 psi sensor, and I also got this uh, gauge mount. So originally I have a I have a EGT gauge, but it's a, it's a, it's a 60 millimeter gauge, and then uh, got this little adapter piece here too. So that I actually had to buy a new console piece because. The gauge was uh, wouldn't fit this thing right here. So, all right. Uh, and I got also got. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this or not yet. The the, the pressure gauge. But I'll show you. I'm gonna show you my uh, gauge setup. This is 100 psi. It's transducer. I got I got a 30 and a 100 for the fuel pressure. But, I mean, one of the things that bugs me about the. I mean, I'll go I'll go through my likes and dislikes what I've learned so far with the. Bully dog. You just can't display a lot of gauges on, on, the, on the dash. So here, here's my fuel pressure gauge, Evo gauge. These are actually really nice gauges. That's my EGT gauge, and that's actually where I was going to put the sensor. I mean, the uh, little bully dog device right there. And then I wanted to get rid of this thing right here because it, it's definitely nice having, but I mean, I, I don't know if this, I think this would ever happen, but this would be a nightmare if this thing blew off or whatever. Um, yeah, I'd be having hot coolant shooting in my cabin here, cab here. So, um, plus I don't like the way it looks. It doesn't look really good. So, um, so I'm actually gonna have a transducer. It's gonna be electronic going into my gauge here as an analog input or into my bully dog. But uh, yeah, the main thing, my I mean, there's definitely some cool features with the bully dog, like shift on the fly and stuff, and I can actually defuel. So if my EGTs get too hot, I can like defuel the, uh, you know, let's say if I get to like 1,250 degrees, that's what I have it set up now. I can defuel, I can detune the engine. If I get to 30 PSI, I can turn off the fuel to save the engine. Because this is not a studded engine, this is still the stock head bolts. And I have 193,000 miles on it, so. But I've definitely am hyper paranoid about it, so. If you've watched my other videos. Um, yeah, I keep an eye on everything, you know, so. All right, so yeah, I had a Hypertech tuner that uh, died on me. I don't know what happened, but what's funny is I was able to take the tune off. Um, so I, the Hypertech tuner, I basically set the engine back to stock, and then I did a firmware update on it, and then I, I could never reprogram it again. So I don't know if it's my truck or the programmer, but like everything looks like it's fine with the programmer, but it just won't tune. It won't go into programming mode. Like it just gives me a blank screen. So. All right, so I'm gonna get going with this first. I'm gonna take off the old thing first, and uh, I'm gonna. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna get rid of that yet or not, but 
just because I don't really know the, uh, you know, I'm not going to do the analog inputs on this video, just because it might take me a while. We have to make custom wires and stuff, gauges, so, um, well, I'll get started, I'll get this old, get this stuff taken out. And that's actually my old line where I had it, you know, the inputs for these gauges, so, all right, we'll get started. All right, there's the pyram pyrometer gauge, EGT gauge. So, I already had it drilled and tapped from the uh, previous one, but uh, I don't think you should ever put tuning on one of these trucks unless you have one of these. Because you're kind of just, especially if you're not studded. Alright, cool. Alright. I got the gauge pot on there, and that's going to go just like that. So, I'm sure some people should, we're going to say, like, you should have got an SCT, but Bully Dog is actually owned by SCT. They're the same company. So, hopefully, the tunes are the same, but we'll see. All right, just gotta fish the HDMI cable up through there. Down to the bottom, I'm gonna hook everything up behind the dash. All right, cool. All right, there it is, take a look. All right, it's pretty cool, I think it's tiny. All right, so there's two different ways you can hook this thing up to power. You can do battery, which will be on 24 seven, which I don't want. So if I hit the battery switch, it turns this thing on. But, uh, like I said, that will keep this thing on 24-7 because the car is not even running right now. So that means it's pulling all the power from the OB uh, D port there. Um, so when I turn the key, it turns it off. So I need to run a key wire to my fuse panel here to uh, make it power on fuse. Interesting they came up with this little tap fuse. Alright, so it's interesting that they have a chassis ground and a battery ground. Yeah, I wonder why I do that. This, I wonder if they want to see if there's a resistance between the chassis ground and the uh, battery ground to see if there's some kind of like a like if you have like a bad ground strap or something. Not sure where these might do that. So a couple of the videos I saw online they show these people mounting these thing in the engine compartment, but I mean, this thing is not weatherproof, so you don't want those terminals to get corroded. Plus, I have to get this truck smog, and I don't want this smog guy to see this boy dog thing. So. Um, so I'm going to try to hide it under the dash here. Alright, there it is mounted. So I used some sticky tape, some of this good 3M sticky tape to put that on top of it. Then I zip tied it in there. And like I said, I want to be able to hide all this stuff. So um, so I need to get this thing smogged. I'll have all this hidden. Um, then I can put this back up too, you know. I'll hide this back up in there. But actually I'm glad this is the newer style connector because the older style connector had the wires come out the side. It was kind of a mess. So I can just do that, keep it hidden, I'm done, pop it back up there. Um, so now I can put my EGT gauge here, and then my analog gauge is here. So I, like I said, I'm still not sure if I'm going to do the fuel pressure or not. Just because I do actually like having the gauge right on the desk, or the dash there. So mainly I have that like when I'm going up hills, like uh, when I'm going up to Big Bear, you know, up the mountains. So um, yeah, actually that's one of the nice things about the shift on the fly, is that I can uh, shift the... Uh, you know, from a performance tune to a, uh, like a regular tune, just because of the EGTs. So, all right, cool. So I gotta fish this thing up here. Uh, the EGT wires, right there, I'm gonna go. All right, there it is, it's wired in. So, I'm gonna come back and make another video about the analog inputs. But, uh, yeah, that's a pyrometer. And those are analog and that's the thermosistor right there the five volts and so okay uh so i have a direct lead the white one goes directly to the battery i have that going direct negative on the battery black goes to this ground positive is key switched and uh all right so i'll put this back together and uh fire this thing up i'm gonna do a first boot up here See what happens. I've already kind of pre programmed the thing already when I was on my computer, the USB power. Okay, looks good. Coolant 72, oil temp 73, pyrometer 75. So, alright, now I gotta install the software. So, menu, install, download, more. Okay, I agree. 
I was already kind of playing with this when I was on, I said connected to my computer. Yes, I have connected to my float charger right now and it's fully charged. Yes, pin install, power stroke, this is at 2006. Let's see, turn the key off position. Okay, continue. And keep the run position. So I wonder how this thing is able to shift on the fly. Yes. Okay, reading engine, so. Alright, this might take a couple minutes. Alright, looks like it's saving the stock calibration. Reading the transmission. Alright, preload tune. Do you want to tune your transmission? Yes. Um. I don't think I'm gonna go aggressive. I'm just, I'll just go firm and see how that goes. Alright, cool. Yeah, I've actually had a when I did that with my Bronco, I did the uh, put a firm valve body in there, and it was kind of a nightmare. It don't feel like a breaker, break your neck, man. If you'd like to remove your speed limiter, yes. Okay, let's see what happens next. Building file. Hi right, guys, got it installed. So right now I have it on the extreme tune, and uh, you can just quickly change in between the tunes like that. You know, that's what's cool on the fly. So let's say if I'm going up the mountain, going to my cabin, Big Bear. Um, I can maybe like turn off the extreme tune because the EGT will get too hot. I mean, it's, it's a long, 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 steep, steep mountain. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's cool. So I got the integrated EGT sensor so I can go back and I can adjust defueling level. level. So it's, uh, where's that? All right, so it's under vehicle setup up there. <laughs> and it's, um, I can zoom that in so you can see it a little better here. It's under, uh, Default levels, okay, pyrometer. So I can, I can adjust the temperature like when this thing will actually defuel or cut off power because uh, I don't want to uh, blow up my EGR cooler. <clears throat> the main thing is I don't want to flash boil the EGR cooler. So when I did that at 1250, um, yeah, because if you flash boil your EGR cooler, it's going to crack it and then uh, create a coolant leak and then uh, create a blown head gasket. So I have the stock, uh, I don't have uh, head bolts. I mean, I have uh, stock head bolts, not the, I'm not studded. So at 193,000 miles too, so um, yeah, cool. Like like on the fly, um, it does actually it does tune the transmission too, which is cool. Um, but yeah, shifting on the fly is pretty cool. Some of the SCT ones don't do that. I think the the newer SCT Livewire does that, but not the uh, like the X4. But uh, yeah, so it's an integrated thing. And for me, I, because I, I did a flush on the other one, <laughs> I'm gonna be just monitoring my coolant and my oil temperature. Here. Looking at the deltas, but uh, yeah, so the, actually the power levels, yeah, definitely it's 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 pretty it's pretty powerful. It's different than my Hypertech. My Hypertech it was mild, and then once you put your foot into it, then it would go crazy. Whereas this one actually seems like it has a lot more torque, a lot more throttle response. The Hypertech didn't have any throttle response, but once it got going, it got going. Like once you got the pedal past a certain spot, then it would seriously kick in and go crazy. Where this one seems like it's way more crazy, like all throughout. So I've only driven it for a couple a couple laps, so but definitely seem we see it's definitely better than stock and it's it's pretty it's powerful. It's pretty crazy, so um Maybe I'll work on a custom tune, I'm not sure, but uh we'll see. I got a couple more mods. I want to upgrade the uh turbo wheel to like a billet turbo wheel, so it'll probably be coming up in the future. And uh I don't know, like I said, I think it's a stock EGR cooler, so um, I might put a bulletproof uh, EGR cooler on there just so I can Peace of mind, you know, I wish I could get rid of the EGR cooler, but I live in California and I need to smog it, so kind of crazy here. So, alright guys, cool.